Hello and welcome to Reddit on Reddit, the internet's auditory version of Reddit. I'm Nelson Allingham, joined by Michael Campbell. Campbell! You know, every week you introduce me. Yep. You never ask me how I am, Nelson. I, it's because I don't care. I mean, I'll tell you if you really want to know. No, I don't care. Since you Not only asked. do I not care, <laughs> the listeners don't care either. That's true. Mm-hmm. Anyway, my point was, yeah. recently, I know mm-hmm. this is several weeks late now, yeah. saw the movie Morbius, so yeah. I'm terrible. Oh. I just wanted to know that. Do you know, I watched The Batman mm-hmm. last night, yeah. and I'm doing okay because of that. But both, only okay. Both bat-themed, but both. different results. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Do you have a hot take on Batman three months after it released? Yes, okay. I do. It's still in cinema, so it was better than my other Matrix, I think. It might uh, not still be in cinemas <laughs> by the time this comes out. Oh, though. yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> but anyway. I reckon it's just holding on now when you saw it. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, still a lot of ads at the start, though. That was really annoying. I wonder, normally, I'm like, huh, if you see a movie a bit late, you get only like a few ads. See, I wonder if the fact that it's been out for longer means it's cheaper to advertise on. So it's yeah. still like a prestige name, but the rates are down because it's been out for a little while. I mean, I think that is how... But like, I think that's how it's always worked. Because they, they used to be... But, cinemas have things called tech releases, which are... Just things they have to contractually release for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and I would sometimes go and see a tech release and they would have so many ads. Yeah. That I would think the pre-show for one of them was like 35 minutes. Yeah. Like yeah. ridiculously long. And I, I always just assume because they didn't care. They're like, yeah, whatever. Chuck an ad. It's two bucks to put an ad on a tech release yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works though. Because I think that it's that the advertising agency that does all the yeah. advertising stuff goes to companies and says, Hey, do you want to buy a time slot? We'll put it on all the new movies that come out within X amount of time. I don't think they really, but it's like within the rating level of what your yeah. product is about. Yeah. I don't think they like pick and choose so much about yeah. what's what I think it's just like whack on a lot of money. Either way, you had to sit through a lot of ads for a very long movie. Oh, such a long movie. <laughs> oh, my God. I found it weirdly long. Um, it's not weirdly long. It's three hours. That's long. That's like, it's not long. like you're like, geez, I thought three hours was a bit long. No, it's long. Like, you are justified in thinking it was long. I mean weirdly long because I don't even think there was... I think there was just a lot of parts that, like, you oh, maybe didn't so need to. needlessly long. Needlessly long. Got gotcha. you. Um. Okay. I the thing is, I thought this Batman was a cool Batman in the sense that I liked his look. Yep. I liked his demeanor. Mm-hmm. Like that, he was a bit like far more brooding. Mm-hmm. You barely got to see Bruce Wayne. Yep. Uh, and I thought that was kind of a you know like a a nice kind of take on it, something a bit different. Uh, I liked that he was a bit more of a detective in this one. Yeah. And his gadgets and gizmos weren't super high tech. They Well, one was like pretty high tech. Yeah. But like even his Batmobile was kind of just a car with just the yeah. th- cool turbo thing on the back, basically. And so all this stuff I really liked about it. So it wasn't like I didn't like the, I don't know, like it from the start you know it wasn't that i got put off right at the start and then just couldn't get into it i was like no i'm enjoying this i'm enjoying this but at no point did i feel as though there was like a climax there was because obviously the story is about the riddler maybe spoilers by the way i might bring up some spoilers yeah. accidentally whatever it's been out for ages it's, it's been out for a very long time <laughs> um so the story is about the riddler and to me That the whole way that it was set up, it was like waiting for you to, um, you know, find out who kind of there's like a reference to somebody in a riddle being a rat, a flying rat. And, um, they ratta a lata or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, and so 
I, I sort of expected that to be like this. <gasps> oh my god, big reveal, or something that you as a as a viewer can kind of try and work out yourself. You know, I think that's part of the fun. And like when it's revealed. I don't think anybody was like, oh, you know, there wasn't this excitement about it. I, I wasn't like, it was just disappointing because it also said that, well, okay, yeah, spoilers, right? So it ends up being Falcone, who's like the crime boss. And they were saying like, he's a rat, but then you're like, uh, no, he's not really, he says, I'm not a rat, everyone works for me kind of thing. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, we sort of knew that. You're, you're a big crime boss. There's a lot of corruption. Yeah. Like, this isn't interesting. You've just, like, dressed it up in a nice way or like a, like a special way. But really, it, it just nothing was revealed. <laughs> and I found that so strange. And then, But then the movie keeps going. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's got, like, after- <laughs> nearly an hour left after that. Yeah, I know. And then you, like, you learn more about the Riddler and the Riddler's kind of like, yeah, it, it was just strange, I think, where he gets put in jail and he's like, but don't worry, there's another master plan. And the master plan is kind of shit. Like, it just yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really. I was surprised at how simple his master plan was. Yeah. It's like, I'm just going to like kill a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's going to be a bunch of people and they're going to shoot a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> And you were just like, oh, and the fact that there was, he had this following online for some reason was kind of glossed over itself, I guess. And then, okay, and then there was this undertone, I think, right? Something that I was certain they were going to address. And maybe you can tell me that I missed something completely because I really felt like it was, it was so lining itself up for this, which was at the start, Bruce Wayne doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. He just wants to be Batman. Yep. He just wants to fight crime. He thinks that's his family's legacy. Mm -hmm. You then learn that his father was corrupt Mm -hmm. and uh, made a... uh, His mother uh, possibly insane. Possibly insane, right. Um, And I felt like they were really leaning towards... Oh, and then even the Riddler, when he sort of captures him, he like talks about being an orphan. And they were both orphans, but he was the rich asshole orphan who kind of got away with... It, like he, he wasn't a true orphan, you yeah. know, he didn't have to suffer like a regular orphan. And so I'm like, they also go to an orphanage at one point. Anyway, and so I'm like, okay, they're setting up the fact that Bruce Wayne will feel as though he has an obligation to the city that's outside of Batman's, what Batman is doing to the city. It's not about just, you know eliminating crime it's about supporting the community yeah. i i really thought it was going to lead to him opening up the orphanage again and like actually contributing to society contributing to the city yeah and they never touch on that and it literally just falls off like you just never he's never like okay i'm going to integrate into society there's just like no ending of his there's okay. no arc or anything. So <laughs> I, I will posit that you did miss something then. Okay, good. Maybe I did. Yeah. Uh, so for me, we'll get into Reddit in a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get it. <laughs> uh, at the start of the movie, when Batman first comes into the scene, he beats up a bunch of guys that are mugging a man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And beats the hell out of that guy. They say, who are you? He says, I'm Vengeance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the guy's terrified of him that he saves. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his whole thing is, I'm Vengeance. I'm going to get vengeance for my parents murder and all the wrongs in the city and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and people are scared of him even though he's saving them yeah yeah and then by the end of the movie that was cool by the way that was cool (laughs) by the end of the movie if you recall when he's fighting all of the henchmen at the thing yeah he says to the the young guy that he he says who the hell are you and the the kid says i'm vengeance Vengeance. yeah yeah and he realizes oh i i shouldn't be vengeance Vengeance isn't the right thing. Yeah. And then the thing he does after he finishes there is he goes straight down. And he starts saving people out of the rubble. Yeah. He helps the the ambulance put people onto the helicopter. Yeah. And he he literally leads people out with yeah. his torch. And the orphanage is Wayne Manor. Yeah. So his old family home. So yeah. I think that it does kind of indicate that he is he has decided. Okay, I yeah. need to actually help people now. Not just scare criminals. Yeah, see, I sort of saw that, but like, to me, it just didn't. It was like such a small thing. 
to me, it needed to be a bigger message about like serving people because to me, you could misconstrue that as, oh yeah, well, like maybe anyone with the ability to, to stop a pylon crushing a hundred people would do it anyway. Yeah. To me, it wasn't like a turning point in his mind. It was like, I mean, I, I do know that they were trying to kind of say that, but to me, it would, it just felt like you needed something else for him to do to be like, okay, he's he's really changed his mentality now. It's not just like a in the moment I'm going to kind of help yeah. people. I mean, I guess there's like a bit afterwards. Actually, that was also what I found cool was just how he would just kind of be around the cops and stuff. Yeah. And, and I liked that. L- little detail I liked was yeah. when he's first on a crime scene and he's walking and he – he moves his foot and he spots something on the floor and then yeah. the crime scene photographer comes over there yeah. and she snaps a picture of it too, being yeah. like, oh, he's picked up on stuff. Yeah, yeah. The police aren't. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was really cool because I, I love that idea about Batman that he's not uh, superhuman. He's just like observant yeah. and uh, perhaps more than other than that's why he's like a detective of sorts. But, okay, we're getting to read it really, really soon. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't even touched on, I think, the worst part of the film. Okay. Which is the relationship between Catwoman, uh-huh. Selena Kyle, and Batman. It is so... The end of the movie is, to me, the weirdest, strangest way to end the movie. There is like, there is like this, uh, I will say, sexual tension between Catwoman and, and, and Batman, mm-hmm. which I think is like typical of... Everything yeah. in the comics, right? To me, totally fine. And even outside of the movie, the press tour with Rob Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. Very horny. Oh. <laughs> Every photo shoot, like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Get a oh, room. <laughs> um, anyway, and so they are at the very end of the movie. Like, if you just put all the scenes that they are in together mm-hmm. back to back and you watch that, you'd be like, there's nothing really here. Like there's there is this sexual tension, but like that's it. There's no like relationship sort of thing. I think they tried to like do a little bit of like she's had a rough past and yeah. and it is similar to his, but like they don't really talk about it or anything. And so but then at the end of the film they have this very uh emotional Parting where they ha- have a few words to each other, and then a weird scene where they're driving their motorbikes yeah. around a bent, like a long road. There's yeah. like three through or- a graveyard, yeah, through a graveyard. <laughs> There's like three or four cuts of them going down yeah. the road, and then they turn off each from each other Fast to different and ways. Seven style, yeah, exactly, different ways, yeah. And even then, there's another bit where he's driving, he's going the other side of the uh, other way of the road, and he looks back in her mirror at her motorbike. Like, what a weird, super emotional thing they tried to get from like a nothing relationship. You, the end of the Notebook wasn't even as sappy <laughs> as the. End of Do you that. think at that point? The director in the edit's like, oh, we're two hours 55. That's exactly what happened. (laughs) If I add five minutes more on this motorbike scene, we'll get it to three hours. And that's a nice round number. Yeah, yeah. that's. I will say as well, Rob Pattinson's Batman does have what I'm going to describe as, with all due respect, big virgin energy. (laughs) Yeah. He does does, seem like he could be a complete virgin. But yeah, yeah. To, put a, to put a bow on the Batman chat, and mm-hmm. thank you for sticking by us. Yeah. We know it's been out for several months. <laughs> uh, is my favorite part outside of absolutely everything of the movie. Yeah. Is uh, pretty early on, he's at home with Alfred. Yeah. And Alfred makes some kind of snarky remark. Yeah. Bruce Wayne just puts on a little pair of sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a really weird beat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just pops on oh, a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. I do remember And it holds that. on him for a few seconds and then it cuts away. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. That that was weird. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Um I loved it though. But anyway, you 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 loved it all. It, it, the, oh, the specifically movie, the, the sunglasses the, bit. The, the, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I did enjoy the movie. You enjoyed the movie, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this is one that I was really off or even checked the Rotten Tomato score, which was like in the eighties or mm-hmm. something afterwards. And I was like, man, I'm just so surprised. Like I, I really did like everything else around it, aside from I feel like the story. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, there is there is movies. I think everyone has them where you like. I like everything about it. Yeah. Why don't I like it? Yeah. So yeah. It could just be one of those for you. So, so it felt like kind of yeah. 
Anywho, should we just get straight into um, the second segment? <laughs> now nah, we got time for. Uh, we'll do a quickie. Uh, this Reddit on Reddit is by. Um, I've got so many here. <laughs> that I <laughs> didn't decide which one to choose. Okay, let's do this one. We're doing a quickie. This is in uh, the subreddit Shitty Ideas, and it was by Hyperactive. 1DUK. NASCAR, but with auto-driving Teslas and no safety features. This could almost be in crazy ideas. Huh. I think it belongs in shitty, in shitty ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but being honest with you, I, I saw this during the week on Reddit. E- oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is weird because I didn't think I was subscribed to shitty ideas and maybe it's been cross-posted somewhere. Oh, maybe. maybe that's where I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Cross-posted to crazy ideas. Yeah. <laughs> which to me... I understand this is in shitty ideas, so maybe it's a, a an ironic joke I'm not picking up on. Mm-hmm. But this person seems to understand that the appeal of cars is watching the cars go around, but not the skill of <laughs> the driver. No, this is what I took from this. They want crashes. The, the most yeah. interesting part of crashes, don't... Can be here's a secret, and all listeners, all right? None of the drivers know this. But we want to see them crash. <laughs> it's but the most interesting I'm, part of car racing. I'm saying don't bother with the racing bit. Just crash cars into each other. Yeah, yeah. Now, but I still want. I still feel like there needs to be that extra. So you goal. want a bit of a narrative? Otherwise, I go to like a monster truck thing or something. You know, they just crush things. I'm like, I want to see somebody come out with like two wheels, you know, and on fire crossing the finish line. I still seems think- inhumane if there's drivers <laughs> in there. Well, see, I still think that like. Knowing that the cars are empty and automated, crashing into each other, seems like it would be good, but I guarantee you it'll be missing something, which is a horrible thing to say. But I think the thing that people like about the car crashes at the car races Mm -hmm, is that there is an element of really, uh, Mm -hmm. like, what's the right word? Like, um, like kind of fucked up <laughs> like like look at how people used to watch people go in the coliseum you know yeah like there's a there's a thing about oh my god someone's really in danger here mm-hmm. that appeals to certain people yeah and i think that if they're drivers i think people that love it would be like it's not the same yeah yeah you know yeah. what i mean um yeah that's true you the crashes are exciting because someone might die yeah it's like uh th- there there are now robots right mm-hmm that can double for stuntmen for dangerous stunts and they're an- anatomically designed to bend and flow and whatnot like a human being. Yeah. Way uh, safer way to do stunts. Yeah. But when you see them, because they've not perfected them yet, so that not a lot of mainstream movies use them, but when you see the test of them, you're yeah. like, something is off. Oh. It doesn't quite look <laughs> right yet. Okay. And I wonder whether the cars would be this. <laughs> I mean, like, really? like they'd crash, but because they're pre-programmed to do it, yeah. there wouldn't be the small little human factors of like swerving at the last minute to try and avoid or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. And and like your your brain, even though if you can't necessarily process the time, would be like something's off, and I can't tell what it is. Yeah. Okay. How about this then? We don't tell anyone mm-hmm. that they're driverless cars. Oh, okay. Maybe we can see inside anyway. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it is a bit more about the threat of it. Because I still feel like they would have those, you know, moments where they... Uh, like try and swerve and stuff. Swerve a little bit out yeah. of the way and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I I can see the point. Okay, so maybe we'll put those stunt dummies, mm-hmm. the robotic stuntmen, yeah. in the cars. So if they do come out, they will fall like a real stuntman. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um what if, Cambo, next level, we clone drivers, mm-hmm. NASCAR drivers, yep. and put them in these cars, uh, and there's a, like a no rules NASCAR, and we expect death, but it's okay. They're just clones. They've got no souls, Cambo. Yeah, yeah. So that way, I think that could be interesting. Have you ever seen the movie The Prestige? Yes. I'm imagining a prestige situation, which is, again, I know we spoiled the Batman. I'm also going to spoil the prestige here. <laughs> no, no, don't spoil that one. <laughs> uh, is that there's a lot of cloning involved, like unethically. Mm-hmm. And this idea of like knowing that you have to essentially sacrifice yourself 
yeah. for something and be cloned each time. So you will live on, but it will never really be you kind of thing. Yeah. And I imagine the car drivers sign up for this kind of deal. Yeah. Being like, yeah, you'll die, but we've got a clone of you ready to go again. Like, oh, no, you see, will live on. No, no. See, I'm thinking the more almost immoral version of yeah. this where the drivers, they don't drive. It's just their clones. So then I feel like that seems more... I feel like I could still be in control of my life. Do you clone them without certain things so it's more humane if they die in a fiery crash? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've like, got- we cloned him without emotions or any pain receptors or whatever. Yeah. We should do that for, like, a lot of sports. We should bring <laughs> back, like, the Coliseum. But everybody's just a clone. <laughs> and for one, we can change their blood. So it's, like, bright, fun colours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when somebody gets smacked over the head, uh-huh. it's like this burst of beautiful purple. Yep. You know? Uh, and... Yeah, and then and they won't have any emotions. Well, maybe they do need emotion. That makes it the Colosseum exciting, mm. I think. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, yes. And also, I think like just any other sport could we could add violence to it, and it would be more entertaining. Golf. That's a that's barely a sport yep. to begin with. Add. Uh, other people on the field. That, like, if you could just beat up so, your opponent with a club. Yeah. What if you just took away... I think we've even discussed this before. Oh, maybe. You took away the one person at a time policy. So when someone else is on the green, someone else is teeing off to the green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. See, that's too... Couldn't do that. Too dangerous at yeah. the moment. But with clones, <laughs> it's practically ethical. Yeah. Clones that don't feel emotion. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, Cambo. They do feel emotion. We just tell people that they don't. <laughs> they seem scared. We programmed him to seem scared. That's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. that was. Yeah, we get that people want to just sort of see yeah. that, but don't worry about it. Because when we go to the clone shop, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, if you want it without emotions, that's $400 extra. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't want to pay $400 extra. Ooh. I'll just tell people it doesn't have emotions. Yeah, yeah. I lost the clerk about, can people... Could people like tell? <laughs> Do you think? And he gives me a wink and he goes, nah, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. And then also people that are being cloned, mm-hmm. I feel like would have comfort in knowing that their clone isn't going through a lot of pain. Yeah. I yeah. think that lie that we told them. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> also to take their pain away, uh, that was also an extra $400. We're not made of money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but also we should tell people that we're cloning. They need to pay those extra money for those extra things. (laughs) We're getting the money from them. Yeah. 600 bucks extra per thing. (laughs) Yeah. But we're not actually getting it. No, no, no. Uh, Yeah. It's like charging somebody insurance, but you haven't actually insured their car or anything. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Uh, all right, Kembe, let's get into Ask Credit. This ask credit is by Freshman44. What actor do you wish would stop getting roles? Stop getting roles. Mm-hmm. Um look, maybe it's just because I'm fresh from Morbius. Yeah. But you know who I'm talking about. Here. It, yeah. Jared Leto. I think Jared Leto is a safe bet. Yeah, I, I would say, in fact, if if you were to go into this uh, post, I would say Jared Leto would probably appear frequently. Yeah. I think it's not an unpopular opinion to say, <laughs> hey, Jared Leto's a bit of a dick, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. We don't need him. I think that the thing that made me hate him the most mm-hmm. <laughs> was after he did his Joker. Yeah. And you're going to have to clarify the details here. But there was something about him, like, saying that somebody couldn't use his version of the Joker or he thought his version of the Joker was better than, like, Joaquin Phoenix's or something uh, like that. Yeah, or... the, the, the story was that when he found out Joaquin Phoenix uh, and Todd Phillips were making Joker, their version, yeah. he tried to get it stopped. Yes, that's... Okay, yeah. yeah I you know, It was something along yeah, yeah. that. And, like, what a wanker. Because I think unanimously you could say he was the worst Joker. There, there was not 
an enjoyable part about that joker at all. And I understand some people have, like, uh, y- you know, they-, they get a script and they're kind of boxed in a little bit. But there's always, like, room for the actor themselves. I mean, that's the whole reason why we've got good actors and bad actors is because some people can it take the role with them, that personality, and really kind of make it shine in the right ways. And I just feel like his was so cringeworthy and off-putting the entire time. <laughs> Jared Leto is one of the only actors. I think I'm pretty good at divorcing person from art. Yeah. I love Tom Cruise. Yeah. As a movie star. Yeah, yeah. As a person, I'm confident he's a horrible yeah, person. Yeah, But I love Tom Cruise movies. Mm-hmm. And I can divorce Tom Cruise as a person from the movies Tom Cruise makes and still enjoy them. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm honestly like that for most actors. There's yeah. actually very few actors that I would even put into this category of not wanting to make any movies anymore. Even if I don't like their movies, yeah. I'm completely okay with pretty much every actor doing what they do and succeeding how they succeed or whatever. Yeah, Jared Leto is one of the only ones I can't get past the baggage yeah. of Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I don't know why it's him Yeah, of all, of all the people. Yeah. Um, maybe there's just a franchise we're sick of. That if you get rid of the main character, Vin Diesel, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we won't get it. No, I'm just joking. Obviously, I want as many Fast and Furious yeah. as possible. And they made like a couple life. without him. They made yeah. that Hobbs and Shaw one. They made that Tokyo one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. But I do like the ones that he's in because it's so funny. Yeah. Um, well, I honestly think sometimes, even to my detriment, I actually I'm a defender of actors that people hate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone loves Rob Pattinson now, which is great. I, I'm loving the people loving him. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've defended Rob Pattinson since since Twilight. Yeah, yeah. Even when he was in Twilight, I'm like, not his fault. Yeah. He's a good actor. <laughs> yeah. I also love Kristen Stewart from Twilight <laughs> movies as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, people say that she's kind of like sulky or whatever. I'm like, she's a really good actress. You just need to watch all the Twilight. Yeah. So I, I'm a bit of a defender of shitty actors. Taylor Lautner, I think he's a terrible actor. He's in a show called Cuckoo, an English comedy. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just, he found his thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, Yeah, I, yeah, I was. uh, Do you have the poster? Is it hyperlink to the post? Yeah, okay. I'm interested to know who people want to see (laughs) Stop It Being a Movies. Okay, the first comment is by Cyanide Revolver. Yeah. And they've said, damn, 99% of these comments are about Jared Leto. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Uh oh, how about this one? Kids are famous actors who clearly suck and are being forced into it. That was by Yeti 1987. Mm-hmm. What do we think about like uh Jaden Smith? This is like the only one I can think of at the yep. top of my head. Look, I don't I don't particularly like Jaden Smith as a as a person. Yeah. But uh okay, the okay, this is the only Jaden Smith thing that came to my mind is the remake of the karate kid that he did with Jackie yeah. Chan. He's fine. I liked that. Yeah, I, I think, thought it was good. I yeah. think he's perfectly fine, and he's clearly talented. And yes, nepotism and all of that, absolutely. Yeah. Ben Stiller is nepotism. If you really want to get into it, like yeah. there's a lot of nepotism in Hollywood. Yeah, but you know what? He's completely fine as an actor. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he was terrible, yeah, yeah, sure, maybe. But he's not. I... He's a dick. Yeah, but he's not terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I feel sorry for those people more than anything because. I imagine that he's had a lot of like pressure and coaching from his dad early on yeah. to it. And like, there's probably perhaps still an element of like, yeah, he wants to do that. But I can't imagine to me, he was a very like a good actor, yeah. especially for a kid, like yeah. a young kid. It's Pursuit hard. Of happiness. He was very it's good hard in. to find. Yeah. Kids. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Even, even younger. It's hard to find kids that can really like, get into a role. Yeah. And so I think that they, and those kids like go through a lot of like training and a lot of like closing off from normal things, you know, friends and school and all that stuff. They sort of don't get to experience as much because they're acting and there's a lot of pressure and stuff. So, yeah. um, yeah. And Jaden Smith has been in movies that have been universally perceived as like bad movies. He's in a movie called After Earth. With his dad, uh, panned as a movie, right? And they said he's not very good. Yeah, but I don't think he is the reason it's not very good. Yeah, I right. think he's not very good because it's not a very well-made movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, say what you want about Jaden Smith, though, but his dad slaps. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's also interesting that Jaden Smith hasn't really appeared in movies lately. So maybe he was like, you know what? Don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I imagine there's super rich kids like that, right? That have just done a little bit of an acting, a uh, little bit of acting, got a bit of money, and they're like, not really into this, but I'm just going to... Invest some money. And, yeah. I mean, obviously, he was probably fine anyway, wasn't he? Let's mm. be honest. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's the dream. Do one Karate Kid movie <laughs> and then quit. Meet Jackie Chan. Meet Jackie Chan. It's my dream. Um, nobody so far, I've just gone through a few comments, has actually named an actor, aside from the first one that said Jared most people Leto, yeah. would be yeah. Jared Leto. Um uh, and I, I, like a one comment here is uh, celebrities who have no acting experience, which I think that is a funny one too. Sometimes it makes me think of. I thought this of Michael is very Jordan specific. in Space Jam was my first thought. On oh that. yeah, yeah, that's good because <laughs> he's not good. <laughs> I don't know why my mind went this way, but uh, Ronda Rousey. Oh yeah, in uh, <laughs> the Entourage. The Entourage. <laughs> Maybe. Or I would say not the worst TV actor show. in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy that plays Vinny Chase. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I sort of agree with that. Actually, it's a lot of, lot of celebrities that you're just like, we didn't need them. Yeah, but this. if they're playing themselves, mm. I think you you understand the contract is they're not an actor. Yeah, you okay, I mean? yeah, that's that's true. Whereas yeah. weirdly, in Uncut Gems, there is an NBA player in that. Mm-hmm. he's quite good and he's playing himself. Uh, yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, you're actually giving like a real performance. Yeah. Which is like when I first saw, I didn't know he was in it. So when he first popped up, I was like, oh, this is weird. Mm-hmm. But as the movie goes on, he's like a main character in that story. Yeah. And he's good. Yeah. He's like yeah. quite good. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. Here's another one. This is by Symmetrical Boy. Your toilet is now sentient. Would you prefer it to passionately, exuberantly crave your excrement or deeply resent and despise you for what you do to it? I think first. I like a compliment. (laughs) Yeah. I'll take them wherever I can get them. (laughs) Don't. Yeah. Uh, I mean. But see, is the toilet to you a happy place? Um, Not really. It's just a place of doing my business. But I would rather it be a happy place than a sad place. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, if I, I went mean, in there and then I'm like, oh, this, now this motherfucker is gonna give me a yeah. hard time. He goes, oh, look who's yeah. back, <laughs> Mister Fat Ass. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I. But like, if I'm going in unbuttoning my trousers and they're going, yippee, well, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, all right, <laughs> oh, I mean, I hope you got a big one today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. You have to just go with a happy version. Yeah. There would be so many more perverts in the world if <laughs> this existed. <laughs> uh, do you think there's other items in the world, inanimate objects, that either would or would not benefit from something like this where they uh, you know, are craving your attention a lot? I don't know about craving attention, but I like the idea of them being... Uh, a little bit vocal in support of what you're doing. Yeah. Say it's like a microwave yeah. and you're heating up some food and they're like, oh, you're heating up some potatoes again. Oh, yeah, a bit of leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're all ready for you. Enjoy. You know, like. Oh, yeah. Just a, little yeah. Bit of, just a bit of fun banter. Yeah, a bit of pep, you know. No, I've decided I hate that. Okay. It's like going to the hairdresser and they're forcing conversation with you. I feel like. You know, even if my hairdresser was like, oh, great set of hair. Okay. I'm like, shut up. I just want to get my hair cut. What if the microwave just at the end of the meal goes, yeah. hey, champ, that food's ready. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like you could program a microwave to do that <laughs> already. Yeah. Um, I think it would be funny if the devices made noises as if there was physical effort involved. Like a microwave going, <laughs> oh, really? 
really? 11 minutes? What are you, <laughs> what are you cooking in here? Oh, God. Ah. That would be hilarious. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. What if your toaster emulated the bread you put in scraping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Just some the the sound of burning flesh is what you hear when you yeah. <laughs> use your toaster. And, oh, oh, help me. <laughs> um yeah. I think also uh <laughs> you can get that response from a toothbrush, I imagine. <laughs> I think the idea of like scraping something against really hard. I can imagine the toothbrush just being like, oh my God. Ah, oh, ah, what if like the, ah, the toothbrush ah. is quite chatty, but when you put it in your mouth, it's just gargled. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, how are you doing there? So the person, woo, 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 woo. And then, so then what I was saying, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, you would want to put, wanna <laughs> brush your teeth more often. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, Cambo, let's move in to Today I Advice. So now it's time for Today I Learned. And also sometimes advice. This Today I Learned is by Moyella. Today I learned that in December 2013, a sophomore at Harvard University sent several bomb threats through the Tor network to cancel a political history exam he was unprepared for. He succeeded, but was caught that same day. That's a big swing. What's the most you do for an unprepared exam? (laughs) Yeah, I know. I was thinking this is like such a stereotypical joke. That people would make. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I could call in a bomb threat. I want to know whether the phone call started with a bomb threat or whether it's like, <coughs> yeah, I can't, can't make it in today. I'm yeah. a bit sick for the exam. And like, oh, actually, medical exemption doesn't count. So you you just fail. Yeah. Okay. okay. In yeah. that case, I've planted a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The first time he accidentally left caller ID. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the professors answered the phone again. Hey, John. And he's like, hey, oh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, oh, uh, sorry, never mind. <laughs> Turned off caller idea. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I'm calling about a bomb. Uh, I, yeah, I can't imagine getting to the point of doing a bomb threat. But I do like the idea of sometimes, Camper, you need to get out of an exam. <laughs> so... I think uh, maybe you need to go with, like, uh, something that people can't miss. Mm -hmm. Would it be wrong to try and convince people that Jesus, number two, has descended upon the campus, Mm -hmm. perhaps, at the time of the exam? Mm. I think technology's come a long way. Bit of a light show, get... Uh, some mirrors and stuff, you can put it on a whole display. I so, think. so you put on a, an elaborate uh, second coming of Christ in the yeah. university or college, uh, I guess like some common area in the in the grounds Yeah, at the time that the exam is starting. Yeah. And they say, and Did, you say, is this everybody who is studying or doing an exam <laughs> right now? Must leave if they want to come. CC exams. Yeah. Do you have this so it's going on as you're entering so you can't even get in? Or do you have it planned to, I would say, to throw suspicion off you like one minute into the exam? So then you're like, oh, I was here and ready and everything. Yeah. Willing to do the exam. But then Jesus number two came. Yeah. And he said that thing about exams. Had to, I mean, I'm... <laughs> There's been an 11th commandment. <laughs> yeah. Thou shalt not exam. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one starting from now. Yeah. All previous exam results yeah. will be held. And it will only be for 20 fo- 48 <laughs> hours. Uh, and then you can exam again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that could be... Um, the, the way to do it. Yeah, I, there's got to be a distraction that you can do while in the exam because you want to be seen as like, I'm ready here to do the exam. No problem. Yeah. Not even sweating about it. And then something catastrophic happens and you have to uh, yeah. you have to go out at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so we should have called in the bomb threat from inside the exam. They would never just text it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there, um, uh, do you think there's an exam important enough to you that you would try and do something drastic? No. <laughs> <laughs> there really isn't. Yeah. I, I really tried to rack my brain there. Can't think of one that, that means enough to me that I would care enough to call it a bomb threat. Yeah. I'll fail an exam all day. Yeah, yeah. I never in my life have I actually experienced that much pressure on an exam or anything. No. I we, remember people, like, even just to the extent, like, people in my school would um, write answers uh, on their, like, arms and yeah. stuff so that they could slide up their sleeve and read Something. I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even care that much. No. If I didn't what, know it, I'd be like, oh well. It did say what this exam was for. It's, it's something to do with history, wasn't it? Yeah. It's not <laughs> uh, important. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a history, political history. Not exam. important. Not important <laughs> at all. If you're studying to be a doctor and you're scared you're going to be a qualified doctor without having passed the exam and kill people, <laughs> yeah. maybe you panic. Yeah, yeah. Political history. Yeah. It's not important. I would imagine as well the idea that like you're if you're a doctor, your concern or just studying to be a doctor, your concern should be you don't know the material and therefore you will cause injury to people. Yeah. Not that you won't pass. You know. <laughs> yeah. If you pass and you don't know anything, that's that should weigh on you more morally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't you, yeah. Um could you imagine being like, oh, my God, I've done a really bad job of becoming a doctor during this period of time. I will literally kill somebody. <laughs> but I reckon if I can cram hard enough just before the exam and I ace it, I'll be totally fine. Actually, I, I, I reckon I've been to doctors like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's the only time I would possibly call it a bob threat. In that specific situation. Yeah. And even then, I don't know. Yeah. I'd probably just say that my first patient, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm scared I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't uh, study for the exam. didn't study for the exam. <laughs> I did a bomb threat and then through some clerical errors, I ended up with a high distinction. I don't even know. Ugh, got me this job. They don't even supervise me. That's how well I supposedly did on the exam. Oh, boy. They want me to come back and teach. <laughs> anyway, which leg are you getting cut off again? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Uh, here's another one. This is uh, some advice. This is by Viaret. How do you convince someone to stop using outdated technology just because, in quotation marks, it still works? They continue. My friend is this person. He drives a mid-90s sedan that wasn't great even when it was brand new. <laughs> it has no modern safety features or convenience features and gets bad gas mileage. As soon as some guy in an F-350 King Ranch, you know what that is, obviously. obviously yeah, yeah. yeah. Plows King Ranch, you said? Yeah. Yeah, picture it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a crystal, I crystal clear sleek image. Sleek design. <laughs> I'm more, I'm about the wheels. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really wheels. like the wheels. If I remember correctly, the, that one four of them. Yeah, five five can be. Oh, one you, the boot. Yeah, yeah. What were all the trunk? Uh, I was thinking the steering wheel. Oh, right. Yeah, that. six wheels. That's that's my favorite wheel of cars. Sometimes <laughs> I get into <laughs> car conversations with people, and mm. I always have to bring up that my favorite wheel is the steering <laughs> wheel. <laughs> Anyway, uh, plows through this King Ranch, plows through a four way stop. He's done. Uh, he still uses a CRT screen to watch TV, uh, uh, TV and shows, and is dumbfounded. No one still supports his TV because <laughs> it still works. His cell phone is years old and has long since stopped receiving any security updates, but it still <laughs> functions. His sunglasses are scratched to hell, but I guess as long as he can vaguely see and they block light, they still work. He makes nearly six figures. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I find that of, of the very handful of 
uh, rich people I've met in my life, they are all quite cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, a friend of ours, he, he married into quite a rich family. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dad owns like quite a big prominent business here, quite a wealthy man, yeah. like millions of dollars, uh, will only ever buy work clothes from Costco. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's, it, I always find that that is, seems to almost universally be true. Yeah, yeah. And like the people that really do make a lot of money don't yeah. spend it. Yeah, <laughs> Which yeah. is how they keep it. <laughs> yeah. My uncle, who's an artist, is uh, gets his like wine and and or alcohol from Aldi, which is like Trader Joe's, mm-hmm. I think. Um, no, I think Trader Joe's is fancier than Aldi. Might be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's and it's really funny, right? Because <laughs> okay, there's a bit of a tangent in this story, but. This one time he told me about he's there's this like other kind of family friend that we have and he's one of these guys that like oh has to have the expensive stuff or or when he does get the expensive stuff he's like oh this is this is the good stuff you know like as if you could even tell the difference and so my uncle one day is like yeah I get this like whiskey from Aldi and it's great yeah like he's like it's you know just as good as any other whiskey um. And, but he knew that this guy wouldn't like, like it will give him crap about it. So he had a Shivas Regal bottle uh-huh. or something like an expensive uh, Shivas Regal bottle and filled it with this Aldi, Aldi stuff. And so he gives some to the guy and he takes a sip and he goes, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's really smooth. That's nice. Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, come on. What a wanker. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, so I think if you're... If you're rich, you probably have uh, some good sense in the fact that you don't need to buy expensive things. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, or new things. My thing here is I'm totally on the friend's side. (laughs) To me, I like, hey, even I'm probably more wasteful than I feel I should be, Um, particularly with, like, clothes and things like that. Like, I will just... I'll wear them until they're basically destroyed. You're wearing a t-shirt right now from the movie Shine a Light, (laughs) which uh, came out in, I'm going to say about 2010. Yeah. Uh, It was a promotional t-shirt you got when you worked at the cinema. Uh So that's 12 years old. Yeah. Admittedly, I wear this under bed yeah. usually. And I was just I like, was good leaving the house. Up so. the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think case in point, 12 years for a t-shirt. Yeah. Good legs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The picture, very faded. Yeah, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can barely you see You can it. just see the Rolling Stones starting to peek through there. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you know what's funny? I was riding my bike with this on one day and some guy sort of stops me. Or, or we had stopped at lights, both si- riding our bikes. Yeah. And um, he goes, oh, great movie. Great movie. It took me a second. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, yeah, love the Stones. Yeah, yeah, so good. And I have like nothing yeah. to say about yeah. it because, like, sure, the Rose of the Stones great, we, but I've just got nothing to say about I, it. I, I assume you haven't seen it. You, they just oh, gave, no, I think I did. Oh, when you it did? came oh, out. Right, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Because I had that shirt and I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I saw everything at one point when I yeah. went to the cinemas. I was like, oh, it's out. I'll see it. There's like a 10 year period yeah. in my life. It, apart, apart, apart from. I guess the movie shined a lot. <laughs> everything yeah, else. I saw everything. <laughs> yeah. And the, within that period of movies between, I would say 2008 and 2018, mm-hmm. no matter what comes on and I'll be watching with Stacey or whatever. And I'll be like, saw that movie at the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Not, not only did I see it, I saw it like at the cinema. Yeah. I saw the 18 remake at the cinema yeah. for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I probably did yeah. too, actually. Yeah. Well, this, this thing came up the other day about the movie The Losers, mm-hmm. which was a, a based on like a DC comic book from is from 2010, same year as the A Team, very similar to the premise of the A Team. Yeah, and a lot of people being like, "What is this movie? Like, we've never heard of this." I was like, "Mate, I saw that opening night at the movies. Yeah, I saw everything at the movies. You don't understand. Yeah. I have such a distinct memory of The Losers. <laughs> yeah. It baffles me that people didn't know it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, getting back to this point, this person's point. Okay, at the start, there is like almost a reasonable element about having a car that doesn't have any safety features, perhaps. Uh, yeah, safe, oh, it says safe, no safety modern features. safety features. 
which actually makes me think that it's got airbags and stuff. It has a reasonable amount of safety yeah, features. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my car is missing a bunch of uh, what I would say are now common safety features in cars. Yeah, um, mine's from twenty thirteen. Yeah, so ten years old ish, mm-hmm. nine years old. Uh, so it doesn't have reverse sensors, doesn't have reverse cameras and stuff, which yeah. I think are like modern safety features. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think my car I, I think, is perfectly safe. I think, uh, just to quickly interrupt you, I, I'm not sure if it's in America as a whole or like uh, maybe in certain states in America, they made it that you uh, it's illegal to manufacture a car now that doesn't have reverse yeah. Uh, yeah, sensors. Yeah, in some they're way. a great idea. Yeah, That's yeah. why. <laughs> Um, but I wouldn't say that my car doesn't have safety features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so that's why I'm thinking, like, even here, like, what at what point are you like, oh, get a brand new car, and then next week, oh, they've got uh some airbags that protect well, your ears the, or okay, something. I was part of a, a three way conversation, not a three way conversation, like yeah. a conversation between three people. Okay, we we're all having sex. Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh in which I realized that I, I think I make far less money than the two people I was talking okay. to. One of them was a CEO. Yeah. The other one's like quite high in a, in a business. So yeah. I was presumably on pretty good salaries. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of them was talking about like, they were getting a new car and said, oh, yeah, we've treated ourselves to a new car. The other one, like we had to get rid of it. Was, it, was, it was more than five years old. Oh, my God. And the <laughs> other person went, Oh yeah, well you got to yeah. upgrade that. Obviously, and it was five how years. quickly the that. second person agreed that made me yeah. go, oh yeah, yeah, and you <laughs> said, oh yeah, yeah, oh I don't keep mine for more than two, <laughs> and that's why like um I I looked up a car out of just pure interest the other day, which was an electric car. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the new electric Kia car. Yeah, because I was like, oh I I like the idea of electric cars. Tesla yeah. is very expensive, but is what's this Kia one about? Yeah, and there were so many features in it that it seemed otherworldly to me. Yeah. And I realized that most of them are actually commonplace features <laughs> yeah. that I just don't have in my cup car. holders. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. Yeah. I mean, mine, yeah, I think is probably even older than yours and has less. I still have a CD player in my car, which I think is uh, yeah, so becoming almost like the tape deck. Yeah. Of I have a CD player in my it's car. It's just slowly being weaned out yeah. and will yeah. be around. I remember look, looking at this Kia. It's a thing. It's like your phone wirelessly connects to like a system, so you don't have to plug anything in or whatever. Yeah, and then it sits on your dash and wirelessly charges. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and then I realized that like four people I know have that in their car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's just a common thing in cars now. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, but yeah, so I think like this this person's idea of like, oh, they've got a car with no safety features, but like, how many features need to be, uh upgraded yeah uh, or implemented before you're like well now i need another car because yeah. there's this new safety thing yeah i would say it also depends on the value that you get from it right yeah like yeah. Uh, i recently i say recently what a couple months ago got a new phone mm-hmm. which is pretty expensive and i put it off for a while i think i have my old one for like five to six years ish yeah uh, but I get a lot of value from my phone, especially because I take a lot of photos with my phone. And yeah. I'm a pretty good phone photographer, I would say. Oh. So the the camera system on the new phone is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And so far, every photo I've taken with it so far, I've been like, this looks fantastic. Yeah. Like, this looks really good. So I find a lot of value in that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas there are other things that I don't find that much value in. So I will just not upgrade it until it breaks. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, this audio equipment, say so yeah. it's pretty good audio equipment. It's not top of the range or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah. until all of this breaks, I will not get yeah. new stuff. Yeah. I exactly. won't upgrade these microphones or this deck or anything like that. Yeah. Until it stops working. Yeah. That's why sometimes we hit it on the way out. Just yeah. to I mean, in- that cable that you've got plugged into yours is going. It is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you ever hear Nelson randomly drop out, we apologize. But yeah. until it fully breaks, I'm not going to replace yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And when we say fully breaks, it means both our mics have to start recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if mine just went out, you'd yeah. still hear me and yours a little bit. Let, let, and that's let, enough for us. We'll do a test here. I'm going to mute your microphone. And if if you can still get picked up on mine. Okay. Here I am. Yeah, people can make that out, I think. Yeah, it, it's enough. It's, it's enough. <laughs> uh, I think for, for this podcast anyway. Uh, but yeah, anyway, my whole point about this, dude, 
is like, seriously, he gives a shit. You yeah, should yeah. live by <laughs> live by this friend of yours. Learn yeah. a lesson from them. You don't need to get new shit all the time. Yeah. We are in a society that throws out so much useful stuff. Clothes is a big one in terms of like environmentally damaging because people get new clothes every freaking week. Mm. Well, some people. And so, yeah, yeah, use stuff until it breaks. And, and again, it's about what's valuable to you. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I was helping my dad try and do something on his TV. Yeah. And I realized that he's got like a bit of an old TV uh, and it wasn't even 720 resolution, which is standard HD, let alone full HD 1080, which most monitors and phones and stuff are, yeah. let alone 4K, which is the standard now. Yeah. But I know that he doesn't get that much value out of it, so there's yeah. no need for him to upgrade it. Yeah. Whereas boots, he spends a lot of money on the boots he wears. I know his boots are like $600. Yeah, Because yeah. he gets a lot of value out of that because he yeah. wears them every day <laughs> specifically for his job. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. it really just depends on that stuff. So if this guy doesn't get value from not upgrading things, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Uh, it's a long episode. Let's get into shower thoughts. Shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Um, don't worry, I think pod napping is going to be real quick. Okay. Uh, this shower thought is by uh, Mutant Llama. An actor has probably been paid more to pretend to do your job than you were to actually do it. Uh yeah, yeah definitely. I've never considered it in that light. I, I find it funny when there's an actor that you know is rich, mm-hmm. but they're playing like a billionaire, and yeah. it'd be like, oh, this is funny because you're actually for the first time playing someone yeah. richer than you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, cause like uh, I remember there was uh, Aaron Brockovich was on TV the other mm-hmm. day, and it's this thing where like um. You know, uh, uh, Julia Roberts is like in this crappy little one bedroom flat struggling with money and their kitchen's old and crappy or whatever. I'm like, this must be really interesting for her to go to that set and be like, huh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I guess some people live like this. Yeah. Because it would be so far removed from like her movie star mansion that I'm sure she lives in. Yeah. But I always find it interesting when like someone plays... Like Rob Pattinson. I'm sure he's a very rich man. Yeah. He's yeah, not yeah. Bruce Wayne, is he? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So when he's driving right. around in some Lamborghini or old, oh, I think he's got like an old vintage Rolls Royce in that movie, he'd be like, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Do you reckon Robert Pattinson was like, maybe I should be Batman? <laughs> I reckon he's thought about it Yeah. afterwards. As if you have never played a, the role of Batman and then been like, I could do this. <laughs> 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 Might be a fleeting thought. Yeah. They've had it. Yeah. They've yeah, all they've had, had it. it. Um, yeah, I just thought this was funny. I thought it was even funny for like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, the guy from like Cheers, um, what's his name? Ted the main Danson? dude. Danson. Danson. Yeah. yeah. That's what his name. Um, oh, you think you're talking about Becker or he plays the doctor? Uh, no, isn't Cheers. I'm thinking about Oh, cheers. yeah, so I thought you were going to say because doctors are normally pretty well paid. No, no, no. Right. I was just thinking about that idea that, like, he played uh, Barman for, like, many, many, many years. Yeah. Super successful show. Yeah. And the just the idea of, like, his wage versus somebody working in a bar that, yeah, yeah. you know, would have actually done that. <laughs> I yeah. It's I, funny I, to I, sort of... You could say know. the same, I think, about Friends. Where I think for a little while Rachel yeah. worked in a coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. I also know that for a while they were getting paid a million dollars an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had one uh, shift yeah. that was more than <laughs> multiple baristas combined yeah. salary. Yeah. Or like uh, uh, Matt LeBlanc. I th- wasn't he like a struggling actor on that show? Yeah. And to be like, I get a struggling actor. It's like, you're getting paid a million dollars yeah. an episode <laughs> yeah. to pretend to be a struggling actor. <laughs> yeah. Do you not see the irony? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, this is by Heels Demons. Uh, people who speak about happiness being more important than money seem to all be rich. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the sentiment is money can't buy you happiness, but you only realize it once you have all that money. The real thing is, why do we, uh, I would say, 
normally. Why aren't we believing them? Sometimes. Be- because we're like, because we're like, they're like, hey guys, it's all about happiness. It's not yeah, about, yeah. trust me, yeah. I've got billions. Yeah, you don't need any of this. Yeah. <laughs> But we're but, like, yeah, but uh, but is it? And then we get the billions of dollars, and we're like, oh, they were right. Should have listened to them back then. But I think I think this is a, a false uh, like equivalence thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I think that most people understand that. But what money does buy is security. Mm, yeah, and being secure then allows you to do things to make you happy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I, I think the point is, but. If you are if you are always trying to increase your wealth so that you continue to have that security means you're just as unlikely to have that. Uh, but I'm saying the, peop- that the, the, the people with the money that are saying that, yeah, mm-hmm. you can be unhappy with yeah. money. But I'm saying if you've come from a poor family and you're now financially secure, yeah, I'm saying there is opportunity to then not buy happiness because that doesn't work, but it, like enjoy yourself more. Because you're secure now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> and you agree. This is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I no, mean, no, no, no. You agree. I, I, <laughs> at no point am I trying to say that, uh, I don't know, rich people are in the right when they're telling poor people that, uh, don't worry about money. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, that's, um, but... I, I, I think there's like a really small element of people not understanding this and yeah. really not uh, looking for happiness and looking for wealth more. Yeah. You know, I, I find because that- I think the idea of like security, yeah, that's nice, but it's like you don't know at what point you're, you are sort of, well, maybe you know that you're secure, but you obviously feel like you could be like, yeah, but I can get more money and I can get more things. I can, you know, I ended up having enough money to buy a house, but I could buy another bigger house mm. with a pool and a tennis court. And then after that, I could buy one with a helipad and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah, I think people <clears throat> that want to be rich just to be happy. Mm-hmm. Remind me of people that just want to be famous for anything. Yeah. Like yeah. The fame is the thing that they want. Mm-hmm. I feel like that when you get it for that reason, it's not going to. Yeah. It's not going to be what you think. Yeah. 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 Uh, any. Yeah, all right. Let's get into podnapping. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I'm being podnapped. Podnapping. This is Podnapping, where we nap a pod. We take a topic of conversation or a segment from another thing, and we do it ourselves. Oh, actually, I've just realized that I forgot to do something beforehand. Uh, This was actually a suggestion from uh, Pesky Gay (laughs) (laughs) in it from our Discord. Uh, He said, it's from the 20,000 Hertz podcast. Ooh been a while since i've put up a podcast how's it feel pretty exciting uh they have a mystery sound segment where guests are presented a recognizable sound effect microphone recording or sound excerpt such as for songs movies or ads um i've done something similar ish you've taken inspiration i've taken inspiration and also through um the effort that I had to put in <laughs> kind of stopped at one point. Okay. And then that has molded the game a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, there's kind of two things. One is, so I've got a bunch of sounds mm-hmm. for you. They're really, they're generally really common. Yeah. So you should, I, I'd say you you would mm-hmm. definitely have heard all of them. Yeah. There's a sound that I quite like is the sound of loud cicadas. So I'm really hoping that during this episode, uh, some of the loud cicadas that have been outside this whole time really bleed through. Do you reckon the mic's picking it up? Let's let's have a try. Mm, Did you hear that? Yeah, I I was looking at the waveforms. Listeners? Yeah. And there was like a tiny little flicker at the very bottom, but uh, that could also just be room tone. Right. Very loud to us. 
Super loud. Yeah. Loud enough that I, at one point I took off my headphones to see how loud it was. <laughs> uh, anywho. Uh, so because I was like, oh, these are too easy. I'm going to add an extra challenge. Okay. And it also helped because I took all these sounds from one YouTube video. Okay. That also had some people talking about it in between. It was such a pain because I don't have any video editing software uh, aside from the generic one that's installed on on Windows, yeah, throw which I bin. bet you nobody has ever used in their life. It was so terrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, and so I had managed to cut out all the sound effects, but not then put them in like different tracks or anything like that. Okay. So they, um, and I was like, it's going to be way more difficult for me to further do something with this. Um, and because I knew that you were going to get them all too easily. This is the game. Yep. I'm going to play your recording. It goes for like a bit over a minute. Okay. And you have to tell me as many sound effects as you can that you heard. Okay. So it's 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 also combined with a memory game. Memory as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh maybe I'll play it twice. Yeah, cool. Um and uh, and we'll see how you go. There's 16 sound effects in total. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, here we go. Hopefully this works. All right. Okay. There are 16 sounds in okay. a minute and One, five two, seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I oh, wrote down. Oh, you got twelve. I mean, I don't even know whether they. This really you correct. might have got twelve. Uh, do you want to? Let's go through yours and then maybe I can play it one more time yep. for you and the listeners to okay. see how they go. Okay. <clears throat> so the first one I was a bit confused by mm-hmm. because there are several different um, uh, audio codecs that films come in. Right. I believe that one was the THX logo. You're correct. Yes. Uh, now, I think there might have been another sound before this one when I was running down. I'm not sure, but I did hear the startup of a Mac. Mac startup. Correct. Uh, I also heard the dragging into a rubbish bin on a computer. Yep. Trash. Yep. Uh, then there was one in between that I didn't capture because I was writing that. Okay. Uh, and then there was the dial-up internet sound. Yes. Do you know uh, they said specifically, sorry, just to cut you off, that it was AOL dial-up, which is interesting, right? Because I've only ever had AOL dial-up. Yeah. And I think I've only ever known people to have AOL dial-up. Yeah. So now I'm wondering if there is another dial-up from a different company that sounds different. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, there was the ding of a... Um, now, I can't tell what kind of phone this is from, no. but it sounded like an iPhone text message. Correct. iPhone okay. text message. Yep. Uh, then there was an old like 3310 ringtone. Uh, Nokia ringtone. Right, we'll yep, say you get yep. that. Yep. Uh, there was the call for Skype. Skype ringtone. Yes. Uh, now, there was another sound one there, yep. which I actually think is the Dolby sound signature. No. Okay. Not mm. Dolby. Nope. Uh, there was the Intel sting. Yes. Uh, there was the MGM Studios Lion Roar. Yes. <laughs> uh, there was the three dings of a train. Is that? No. no. See, I'm pretty sure in England, the ding, ding, ding. Yeah. 
train approaching. Yeah. Is what okay. I confused it with. Yeah. Uh, and then there was the dun dun of Law and Order. Law and Order. Everybody knows Law and Order. Now, if I had obviously um, done this differently, I could just play the sounds that you didn't get. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't. Okay. So let's go one more time. Yeah. And you can give yourself, obviously, a bit of extra time to, um, to write because yeah. now you've got most of them. Okay. Here we go again. And you, listeners, did you do as well as Cambo? Okay, here we go. Yeah. Now there was a generic error buzz in there. Yes. Um, but I couldn't recognize exactly the error buzz other than like a computer program, like a like a illegal operation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it was called on the SI program funk error message. Yeah. Uh, and probably more commonly for Mac, I think. Yeah. In in yeah, the way yeah, that yeah. it's it's got this like mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So uh, uh, yep, you got that one. There was that one was just before the trash because you missed that last time. I was like, oh, yeah, that? yeah. I I knew as I was writing um, Mac, yeah. there Mac was a startup. few because the trash is also the Mac trash sounds. Yeah, yeah. As well. That's right. Yeah. There was a few Mac sounds in a row, and I I heard something else in there, and I knew that we're doing Mac things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Now there was a dun dun kind of sound that I can't. I yeah. Can't play. I, I recognize it. Was like it's point seven of a second. It's or really something. really quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I can't quite place it yeah i did hear the playstation playstation startup. yes there was one directly after that i don't recognize but right. i'm wondering whether that's is that xbox it is xbox okay i didn't, I thought didn't recognize the it. very start of it i think people wouldn't know so much but there's the here at the end of it which i think is sort of more a little bit more iconic I right think, for xbox yeah. yeah um yeah i guessed xbox just assuming that it came after playstation yeah um and the ding, 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 I still, I, I recognize it. But other than generic announcements, I yep. can't think of specifically what it is. Yep. Uh, so it was that 14 out of 16? Uh, oh, right. Yes, I think so. Because you miss one and then the ding, ding, ding. Yep. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think you got 14 out of 16. Good job. Where's the bell cam be? Hey, <laughs> there you go. Uh so the one that you missed, the ding that you missed, yeah. was actually the Facebook message ding. Oh, okay. Which I think you would get the dun -dun. On, on yeah by itself. Yeah, I think most people would. Uh huh. But just uh, put that in there. It's it's a really quick yeah yeah ding. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the one that you didn't the get three tones. Ding, ding, is actually from NBC. Oh, okay. It's uh, one of like the oldest sound effects. They they had that ding 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 when they were um, just doing radio back right you know, okay ages ago. And but they have continued to sort of use it um, for forever. Some other interesting things is apparently Intel's one uh, that sound is like recognizable by like 90% of the population or something, hmm. which is weird, right? Because Intel is about processes as if anyone would normally be like, oh yeah, I can recognize a like, I, or, or I, I'm even in the world that talks about processes, yeah, yeah. you know, but for some reason 
Intel. I mean, they are more than that, but that's kind of like their thing anyway. Yeah. But it, it just seems like it's so strange that everybody or a lot of people can identify that sound. Um, some other interesting things about that was the uh, law and order that ding, ding, yeah, dun, dun, yeah. is meant to be a cell door closing. Huh. So there's that. And I also know the THX sound mm-hmm. that progressively. Yeah. Um, THX is a sound design company for like theaters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that originally, a lot of theaters just had like two speakers behind the screen, stereo sound. And then when surround sound came in and then surround sound with subwoofers came in, yeah. essentially that was designed to start at the back of the room, go yeah. to the front of the room and put the bass on yeah. to show off all the new speakers in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's got a very specific sound to it to show off things in it. Now I don't think it makes a lot of sense because people are used to it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it had a very specific purpose. Mm. Well, that's like the... Dolby Atmos one. Yeah, now, yeah I it think shoots around has and stuff, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, I was going to say as well, actually, another interesting one was the AOL dial up. Uh, one of these guys talks about how he actually has seen like the blueprint of like what happens there. And it's actually two modems talking to each other. Right. He's like, you can see one modem just like the, do, and the other one will go, do, do, you know, and it's yeah. like, and I thought that was interesting that it's actually kind of communi- computers communicating to each other is what you're hearing, yeah. which is interesting. Uh, any schmoo. That was What's That Sound? And uh, now it's time for the Ask Me Anything, where listeners of the show, just like you, listener, can write in and ask us anything you want. Going back to back with Hazza. Mm-hmm. Someone in last week as well. They say, uh, gentlemen, cunts. Four days a week at exactly 8.30 a.m., I pass a Brinks armored car on my way to work. Obviously, I'd rather take the contents of the car uh, and then skip out on work. How can I make this happen? I'd like to think I've built a rapport with the driver after these many passings, but I'm doubtful that there'll be ever be enough to convince them. Love you guys, Hazza. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Straight off the bat. You think that uh, you've built up enough rapport with the many passings of this truck and you're doubtful that it'll be enough to convince them. But shoot your shot. Shoot. It, yeah, that, that's a, a good go. point. When you're next to them next, roll down your window. Hey, can I have some money? Give it a go. See if they'll just let you take it. Maybe the guy's fed up with his job. Maybe he's part of the... Work reform or anti-work subreddits. Yeah. And he's like, take the money. I don't even care anymore. And then, uh, yeah. It is written into their contract that every 100th person that asks them, they do have to give money to. Yeah. So you might not be on number 100. Yeah. Honestly, you're probably like third. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But not not many people ask armored car (laughs) drivers if they can have money. But I would also say, this has been done for you, Hallie. Mm Mm-hmm. Darren Brown, favorite of this show, has a TV special called The Heist. Yeah. In which he slowly programs a group of people that believe that they're at a self-help seminar to rob an armored car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he ends up getting, I think, three of them to do it. Yeah. Just through the power of suggestion. Yeah. To put this idea in their head that they want to rob an armored car. Yeah, yeah. Do that to a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. You know where the car's going to be 8.30, four days a week. Yeah. So you know the location of the armor car. He had to set it up for the TV show. Yeah, exactly. But you know where it is. He robbed that. Yeah. He he actually robbed the armor car. Now, he, he's like, oh, it's all for TV or whatever. Yeah. You don't do it for TV. Don't film it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be an idiot. Don't film it. Yeah. He, he did a version where he filmed it and then a version where he didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually ironically funded through the gains he got from yeah. robbing his first armored cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Darren Brown's The Heist. Uh, it's, That's it's true. It's exactly what you're talking about here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I imagine this is what I think. It would be actually much easier to rob an armored vehicle then people make it out to be yeah i've seen the town they just dressed up as nuns and rushed them yeah exactly uh yeah because i'm thinking if you if you're just like at any sort of um you know like a shopping 
center or shopping mall or something mm-hmm. and there's an album truck there picking up whatever nobody's like expecting for them to get robbed you know yeah. i feel like you would just be so relaxed there's people probably in that job that have been there for like 50 years or whatever and it's just a paycheck to paycheck thing mm-hmm. bam one day you just rub them I feel like there wouldn't be as much resistance as you think. That's what I reckon. Again, this is a plot element of the movie The Town. They Mm. scope out the people who are driving the armored truck to see whether or not they seem like the kind of people that will go above and beyond for their job (laughs) or whether they're in it for a paycheck. Yeah. Because there's one where the guy's like, this guy tucks his pants into his combat boots. Like, Mm. this guy seems like he loves the idea of being a guard. We're not going to rob him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... And I really do think you're in the right period of time with the work reform stuff going, everybody's going ape about that. Uh, I reckon maybe that is what you need to do, uh, suggesting as you're passing by them occasionally is just uh, things like uh, shout out to them, oh, uh, don't you want more paid holiday days (laughs) during the year or stuff? You know. Just it needs to only be obviously bite sized comments that you can yell yeah. out to them. Um and then I think after enough time, when they look more disheveled yeah. in their appearance, like they've haven't tried as hard in the morning to do their hair or whatever, that's when you got them. That's so always so carry cool. a gun as well, by the way. Just in case one morning like, oh, they're disheveled today. Oh, this is the time. Yeah. yeah, this is the time I should do it. Uh yeah, that's uh that's a good plan. The other plan is find out who this person is, seduce them mm-hmm. off the, you know, yep. off the highway. And then, uh, yeah, I think seduction will get you a lot of places. Yeah. Here's another one. Get, because obviously they carry money in uh, like bags, in like normally like a canvas or a, um, like a, a, like a, I don't know, like a plastic kind of bag. Yeah. Get one of those for yourself and be seen carrying it every day oh, as you yeah. walk past. Mm-hmm. Maybe even comment, oh, that's so weird. We got the same bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. So then when you do steal it and oh. they see you walking down the street with it, they're like, but she's always got that bag. Yeah. You've, you've slowly programmed her. them oh. to thinking, oh, well, she's always got that bag. Nothing's amiss. Yes. Also, I've just realized that uh, you can just walk up and take the bags. Yeah. Um, I've seen it done by Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. <laughs> Just walks yeah, up and Are takes you it, in a so. living the same day over and over situation? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if that is the case. It's, this is going to be a walk in the pathway. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn piano. You'll do all the other things. He does. Yeah. Uh, in fact, step number one, replay the same day over and over again. That's how, that's how it needs to start. Mm-hmm. How many places do you reckon you could rob in one day if you were in a Groundhog Day scenario? Well, the armored car's quick. Yeah. So yeah. that's taken up 10 minutes. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bank job, you need to hear them early in the morning. Yeah. So you're starting your day, but is the armored car delivering to the bank? This is the question. Do you get them both at once? Oh, both at once. Oh, yeah. Because the robbery Delaying. part itself, the, the part that takes the time is the planning. Yeah. You see a bank job, aren't they normally in and out within like two minutes? Yeah, yeah. They're always like, quick, the, the alarm's been triggered. We've got two minutes. Yeah. Um, so if you plan enough, you can hit a few. I've realized what the problem is just now. In Groundhog Day, yep. you don't see the next day. Yeah. It could very well be that the next day, they're like, hey, Bill Murray, we've got you on camera. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> next day starts it, with... It, it, yeah, it took us. Sir, <laughs> it's the police. Open up. <laughs> it took us twenty four hours to find you. <laughs> now we've got you. Shouldn't have stolen all yeah, that money. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's uh, that's where you got what out shot. Yeah. Um, should we save this? But then should we save this other email for the next episode? We're running quite long. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. do it. No. Um. Cool. Uh, so thanks for writing in, Halle, and also Pesky Gay on our Discord for the pod napping. If you would like to write into us, you can do so. Reddit podcast, R-E-A-D-I-T podcast at gmail.com. Yep. You can also reach us at Facebook, Twitter, and our subreddit. They're all R-E-A-D-I-T podcast. 
Uh, and we'd appreciate it if you could subscribe and rate the show. Yeah. Uh, five stars. And rate the Batman less than five stars because it was just okay. Rate it whatever you want to rate is what I'm going to say. But and not And every act is stars. okay with me. Not five stars. Not five I stars. won't accept it. Six stars. Oh, you've got me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening and we will read you later.